Welcome to the story of liberty. Johann Gutenberg was a German inventor of the movable type of printing press. He helped bring liberty to the Western world. It all begins back in a small town, a Dutch town, with a man named Lawrence Koster who employed him. Johann, this was an apprentice. In the land of the windmills where people make great dikes, and the windmills pump out the water and to the lands of the farms. Boats go by every day on the canals and the children sing beneath the trees to hear the birds sing and breathe the fresh air. One day, Lawrence is with the children and he decides to carve their names into the bark of the trees with his knife. And the idea comes to him and he says to himself, what if I could carve the letters of the alphabet, each letter of a separate block, ink them over, and then I could stamp any word in the language. The year is 1423 and not too much liberty has come to the world. Men have been spending lifetimes writing one book with a pen on parchment. Well, our good friend, he passes away, Lawrence Koster, and his apprentice, Johannes Gutenberg, is a young boy, but he doesn't forget what he has learned. He realizes that wood will not work out, it wears out, and It'll not bear the pressure of the printing press. So it must be metal, and he tries all different kinds of metals. He realizes that he must make a mold, too, for each letter, and that's expensive, but he could get it done. But he needs help. He needs money. Well, he runs into a man named John Faust, who is a goldsmith who knows about metals knows also the value of the invention that Johannes Gutenberg has. So he supplies John with money and other materials he needs. But through perseverance, all these difficulties seem to go away. And one day, Johannes shows the goldsmith his first invention, his first perfect letter done as if by a pen. The year is 1450 and now he has the whole alphabet and they begin to print their first book. Liberty is on its way. It's been years since John Wycliffe died and the monks are still writing arduously in their little cells but the people are not happy and they're taxed a lot. And the king of France, Charles II, is taxing everybody to death. But now the great event happens. And the Bible is printed on vellum. And it contains 607 leaves. It's a most beautiful book. And Faust sells it to the royal library, to the king himself. King thinks it's beautiful. And eventually others want to buy it. The archbishop and the wealthy people of the land hear about it and they want a copy. So the book begins to sell. The Bible is now being spread into homes and parents are telling their children about scripture. Little did they realize that how could this be that these Bibles, side by side, are precisely alike. The man that did this must have great memory and penmanship. There's the same number of pages, and each page begins with the same word. There's not any variation. How could this be so perfect? Well, till this moment, the great invention of Johannes Gutenberg has been a secret. But now the doctor must divulge it or a lot of trouble or be burned. So Johannes, he has printed so many Bibles now that the price is cut in half. And Foss decides he better save his life and tell the truth. 
And he tells them that the Bible that they have purchased was printed by the Gutenberg Press. Well, this is okay because with the setting up of this great printing press, the movable type, it began a diffusion of knowledge. It began the spread of liberty. And men and women began to read scripture and comprehend their God-given rights. What other men, nobles and bishops and popes and others, should respect. And there you have it, the beginning of the first movable printing press and the printing of the Bible unleashed in the hands of men and women who love God. It is, in fact, the beginning of liberty to the Western world.